All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem and Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the open elect out there. This is Brother Atazawan Bayat. I'm back with a short, quick lesson. All right. And um, the point of this lesson is to take a look at the, particularly the first two verses. Okay. Romans 13. Now, as you see at the top, it says, be subject to government, right? And uh, Slakia for the North. Be subject to government. And those of us in the truth, all right, the Israel of the Most High, Yahweh by Shem all right, the, the elect uh, remnant, all right, the portion of the Most High, right? It's amazing. You don't hear anything until you hit record. Oh boy, this is why we got to get out of here. Um, anyway, it's like you. Anyway, um, the portion of Israel, all right, the elect, we're not going to be combative as we see uh, these perils begin to pick up here in the earth, right? That we, we honor what the Lord has already done, right? And putting certain people in place, certain people in government in place, uh, certain government officials, uh, anywhere from being a a statesman, right? A governor, uh, chief of police, so on and so forth. We're not combative with this structure, right? Because the Lord ultimately has put these people in their positions, okay? Doesn't mean we can't pray against them, but physically, we're not going to be combative. All right, so let's look at Romans 13 1. It says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be, right? Because that's what we're talking about the powers that be, okay? The powers who are running this wicked kingdom, right, are set up by Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Okay, so to go against them, right, would be like going against the Most High and the Son, okay, because for this time period, he has things, everything is already laid out, but in this time period, it's not for us to fight, to try, if you will, to free ourselves, okay, we don't have enough uh, power in our hands, as it were, in terms of physical strength, physical ability, uh, physical army, right, uh, we have spiritual power, the power of faith and the power of prayer, okay? And that's what we utilize, okay? So going on, let's read it again from the top. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of the most high, the powers that be are ordained of the most high. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Lord. That's right. So it's not meant for us at this particular time to try to topple a so-called government or a structure of government. This is for the most high to do, right? For, uh, and, and more importantly, it's, it's for our savior to do, right? Yahweh Shai, okay? Going on, it says, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, okay? So you're gonna bring some serious hurt onto yourself by trying to liberate yourself and free yourself. Okay, it's not for us to do. Okay, and uh, this is being done on a few minutes of a so-called lunch I got here. All right, just to get these scriptures. Okay, get these scriptures out. So let's look at uh, Psalm 75 and let's go up to verse 5. And it reads, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But the Most High is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another, right? So it is the Lord ultimately who have set these kingdoms up, who have set these people who run these kingdoms. It was based on what the Most High wanted to bring about his, his effect, okay? To bring about... Um, all of that he set in motion and how he wants this thing to play out, okay? 
Verse 8, for in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh, there is a cup and the wine is red. It is full of mixture and he pours out of the same. But the but the dregs, dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the Most High of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted, right? So the Lord is doing all the work, okay? And we don't have to really lift a finger. All we have to do is what? Lift our voices, okay? As it were, as the trumpet, okay? For Yahweh by Shem Yahushai to warn our people and to tell them to get their house in order, all right? Because there's going to be a great battle, all right? This is Psalms. 24 and 1, and it says the Psalm of David, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in uh, Salakia, and they that dwell in it, therein Salakia. Okay, I'll read that again. Psalms 24 and 1, the Psalm of David, the earth is the Lord's, the hollow, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Okay, so the Lord is ultimately in control of the things that go on in the world, okay? He set us up, one up and he bring us one down, okay? He set up and appointed those that he want to appoint, all right, to be in charge, to bring about what? His end result, you see? This is Job 9 to 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked and covers the faces of the judges thereof, if not, where and who is he? So these are the people, the wicked, right? Esau, Edom, who's in control as we speak, okay? And the Lord had already said, when we go back, uh, go back to the Psalms. Uh, I was looking for something. Bear with me just this quick second here. Let me see if I could still. Yeah, here it is right here, 75 and 10. And it reads, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, right? So the wicked is in control for right now, but the Lord will eventually cut them off. And it goes on to say, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted, right? That is the Lord's elect will be exalted because we're waiting on your how about Shem Yahushai. All right, even though the wicked is in charge right now. And these times are coming up on us where you're gonna see all types of manner of destruction, okay? All types of heinous acts uh, will come upon the earth, especially now, since we know that what? That thing gotta be put under your skin, you see? Okay, which is gonna bring about a lot of terror and destruction. So let's go over to um, Second Ezra's 15, and we'll read right here, jumping in verse 14, it says, woe to the world and them that dwell in, right? We know that everything in the world and those that dwell in it, what, are under the control of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, okay? For the sword and, and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, right? So their ruling governments, all right, the people are going to lose it in such a way that they're not going to regard those that, what, have rulership over them, okay? That's not talking about the elect of the Lord, but it is talking about the situations that we're going to witness, okay? We're going to go through it. You know, um, but ultimately we're not we're not the ones that'll be out there fighting or, or bringing pistols and all this kind of thing, breaking in other folks' houses. That's no, that's not us. But this is what you're going to see, right? But they're not going to listen 
to their police chief, their fire marshal, their councilman, their alderman, their governor of their state, whatever respective state you stay in, okay? All right, and meanwhile, these are the people, the men, the women, okay? You gotta include them too, who are so-called elected officials, right? Who are governing over the so-called citizens of Babylon the Great, all right? If that makes sense to you. Going on, it says, and the course of their actions shall stand in their powers. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to write because these same princes, these same kings, these same governors, okay, are going to be the ones who will institute or initiate what's known as martial law. And we go into these scriptures often, right? It's just about that they come out every day now, okay? So let's read a little bit more. It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, right? Terrible, terrible times, terrible trouble, okay? It's going to cause these people to flip out, okay? Verse 20, behold, said the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south and from the east, and Libanus, and, and turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. You see, but the whole point being that the Lord is in control of all situations that are going to come upon this earth during this time of destruction, during this time of tribulation. Okay. And then it's not up for debate or up for us as the hopefully elect to be trying to go up against those who are in power today. Okay. This is uh, Psalms 27 and 14. It says, wait on the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Be of good courage. And in these times coming, these perilous times, these dangerous times, okay, that are right upon us, all right, we have to be of good courage, okay? We're not going to be shaken. We're not going to be afraid, okay? Because the Lord has, what? Not given us that spirit of fear, all right? Wait on the Lord, how about Shem Yahushua, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Right, he's going to strengthen your mind, okay, through the spirit. You're going to have a mind to wait on the Lord because you are already understand what, what time you live it in, okay? Wait, I say, on the Lord, how about Shem Yahushua, and that's what we're going to do, okay? We're not going to go up against those whom the Lord has put in power. All right, this is Psalm 37 and 34. It says, same thing, just about. Wait on the Lord, how about Shem Yahushua, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and the wicked is in great power right now today, okay? And spreading himself like a green bay tree, Yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. All right? So they have a day of destruction coming towards them. All right? They have the indignation of the Lord that's coming upon them. They're going to drink of that cup, and they're going to drink double. All right? This is Zephaniah 3 and 8, and it reads, Therefore wait ye upon me. Saith the Lord, how about Shem Yahushua, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. Did not we read that in uh, Second Ezra 15, just a few minutes ago, right? That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fury, Salaki, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy for then will i turn to the people a pure language that they the hopeful elect may all call upon the name of the lord yahweh by shem yahweh okay and we have the names again you see to serve him with one consent 
from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplant, even the daughter of my dispersed. And who is the daughter that is dispersed? Israel. Okay. Shall bring mine offering in that day. Shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mouth. Right. We're going to come correct. Right. The Lord is going to purify us. And man, we're going to be all right. Okay. Let me get this last scripture and I got to go. All right. This is uh, Second Ezra 9. And uh, start at the top. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? When you have uproars of the people, you have what? Riots, okay? You have uh, pillaging. You have, uh, as they call it, looting, all right? People get tired of it. And they know that these people who are governing over them are wicked. Even the people of the world are, can see that, all right? And they're going to get fed up. As you can see over there in, uh, what was it, last week in France? Four, five, six days of rioting over there. Okay? That's coming here to America. Okay? Not giving any regard to their kings and princes. They don't care. All right? Going on a little bit further to uh, verse 4, it says, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, for like as all that is made in the, in the world hath the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Okay? And these things are showing themselves to be true. The scriptures are popping off. The prophecies are coming to pass. It's, it's going so fast, it's making your head swim. Okay, all right, all these different wonders and signs, you know, the wicked, you know, showing their wonders and signs with their, with their MOTB and their, they see hip, right? One they want to put in your brain, the other they want to put in your hand or in, in, under your skin, let's put it that way, because that's what the article said, right? All these signs and wonders, all right, these blood moons, okay, all these different things that we're seeing in the earth. You know, we know that the time is near for our Lord's return, okay? So we just be encouraged in that, all right? And understand that the Lord set these people up, and he's the one to bring them down. We go back to Romans 13, 1 and 2. We'll read it and close out, all right? Verse 1, it says, Romans 13 and 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but the most high. The powers that be or are ordained of the Most High. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of the Most High, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. All right. So we keep that in mind that, hey, let everything play out the way it's supposed to. All right. I pray the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Okay. All those who are sincere at heart. All right. Who have repented. And pray for the return of Yahweh Shai to deliver us. All right. With that, I'll end the lesson right there. Lord willing, it was edifying. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Bakakadash, and double honor to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Shalom to the hope of the elect. See you all again real soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.